to answer your question about um, how uh, it, it would work in inland tidal and easements and all that kind of thing, I, I guess the issue is if you're looking at an immutable record that has consensus on on whether it's accurate or not, that process can be conducted once, um, but not uh, every time the property changes hands. And so the tidal search um, basically is would be something that it, it adds additively on, but doesn't have to go back to the history of the beginning of time, like a, a typical title search always involves. Um, that's very frustrating to folks that are that are maybe unfamiliar with the business. But why am I, when I'm refinancing my house, the, I, the title is still the same as it was, and the, the, first, the, the first owner of, of the house is still the first owner of the house, many more how many times itself. itself. But yeah, I know you shake your head and says, you know, said no, it's not. Um, but and there are easements, there are, there are additive things. But these are these are if you can use an immutable record to say this has been done once, it's okay. The fact is, you may not even need insurance on it against it because the, the, the actual government body itself or the county may be saying it is what it is and it's immutable and there's there's there is no dispute about whether it's this. Uh, property line is where it is. Okay, and I think the other answer here too is that you wouldn't build a solution to, to automate the title records management just with a blockchain app. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of other components that go on to that. The user interface components, the way for someone to actually say, hey, this now there is now an easement, I need to record the easement. I'm not gonna re-erase the easement. There wasn't an easement in 1810, but there is now. Right. But yeah. there's a system that goes around this thing that is makes the entire and you just think about how much effort is gonna be involved in putting all that stuff in the first time. You know, plenty of work for you. Yeah, there's, there's just a, 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 a small, I, I think I understand your question. We actually tried to implement this in 2014 and 15 on the state level here in the US and in, in some other countries. First of all, different countries have different title systems. Second of all, the, the real problem, it's, it, as, as Tom correctly pointed out, it's not necessarily a back end problem, it's that every county has its own title office administrator, right? Now, the, the speed of that title office administrator and the speed at which they input data into any form of technology, database, blockchain-based, pen and paper, you know, abacus, wh whatever, it's, it's their speed of inputting data into that system that creates the gap problem where people can claim title fraud, you see? So, if, if you want to solve the gap problem where, where people can claim title to multiple banks within the two-week period, that two-week period, or one-month period, depending on the county, and there's, I think we came to the numbers for 2,000 or 3,000 counties in the U.S., a massive amount of counties, right? 3,600, great, that's, that's a lot of counties. So you would have to go to each one of those counties, and you would have to sell that municipal county administrator on a new backend, but then that new backend would have to magically take their um, title update time from two weeks to a month, to a day, it won't do that, right? So then we began focusing on states like uh, Hawaii that only had one title system for the entire state. That's more realistic, but once again, that's a state issue. Um, the, the real benefit of this, as we looked at it, is, is the four large title insurance com the title title companies in the U.S. They would be the massive beneficiaries from this because what they do is they pay big data companies to scrape these 3,600 counties and sell the data that they don't have back to them at massive amounts of money, massive. So the, the real people to drive this, in my opinion, would be these title insurance companies, and they would be the ones that would, that would go out and sell the 3,600 county administrators. But once again, the issue, as Tom said, is that the issue is not, it's not a blockchain, it's not a backend issue. It's, it's getting the account, yeah. it's getting the admin administrator to do it in a day rather than two weeks. Um, that's that's what we ran into. We're out of time, we'll take one question and then just, just we can come up afterwards and get to the house. Hi, I, I'd like to ask about uh, the documentation standards. I was thinking uh, about tax law, like all the different versions that come in, the addendums and subsets. Uh, the different versions of the same contract. How are you going to order this uh, with the blockchain? How, how are we going to search? You know, like, uh, how do you know what versions of a contract you would search for? 
how, how are you going to do that? And I'll organize it where you can search your, you know, like uh, um, for particular details of the contract. What's the documentation standards like? You operationally, uh, you know, how, how you would uh, yeah. Yeah. document these contracts and start contracts. Yeah, all these smart, there's going to be so many different smart contracts, and there's going to be so many different versions. Also, like you were saying, different counties, different countries. You know, how, how are we going to search through all that? I mean, now we're going to have all these contracts that are very similar, but how do we know, like, uh, you know, how do we compare, when you, when you aggregate data, and how to search for a particular version that you're looking for? Uh, I, you know, I, I guess my answer would be that it, it's not the intention of, of the blockchain to replace all, uh, all methods of, of finding and searching aggregating uh, in, information, um, you know, it, it is a, a record that's relatively mutable that basically is timestamped, um, but the utility of, of that record is something that's um, subject to whatever the use case happens to be, and so if I've got, just like in, in our current uh, structure, if I've got a bunch of contracts that are going to have like, addendums to them, I've got a different way that I want to go find them and search for them different from someone, the way somebody else would um, because the utility to me of having those records together or having them searchable um, in a way that I can find them and index them is it, different to me than it is to, to someone else that's involved in the conversation. And I see this as a huge opportunity actually because the, the fundamental nature of the contract has changed. You can't store them the way you normally did before. So there are opportunities for companies to build contract management systems for smart contracts. I mean, there's a lot of development that can happen with the advent of, of smart contracts and blockchain technology starting to become viable in these different industries. There's going to be a lot of amazing development down there. It's not just the blockchain stuff. It's a core piece of it, but there's a lot of work around it to actually make it all happen. So with that, I think we're, we're out of time. The cops are back. Tell us to sing one song. Thanks very much.